Welcome to our presentation on find out where you can find RECIS activities and LESs. Um, we offer each week a different topic. So today we're going to talk about where, uh, talk about our websites and different activities. Uh, it says from four to five, it might take half an hour, it might take 45 minutes. Let's see uh, if you have uh, uh, questions uh, during the presentation. So depending on the number of questions, uh, the, the, the length will change. So here we go. Let's start. So I think you want to take that part? Sure. I'm just uh, muting people and here we go. All right. So uh, as you probably know, we have uh, global intentions for uh, the entire series of, uh, I was going to call them a uh, pedagogical get togethers. So <laughs> That would be a good name too. So uh, our intentions and success criteria for our events, uh, we want to provide support for teachers like you and CPs in the distance teaching context. And uh, we want you to know uh, how to assess and prioritize your needs. We looked at that last week. Uh, we want you to be able to find and use the available resources we have for you. And we want you to be able to use technology to adapt, modify and redefine lessons to suit your distance teaching needs. Today we're going to uh, show you how to find our activities and LESs uh, and so that you can suit them uh, to your classroom and distance teaching needs. So we have two great sites we're going to uh, show you. They're ours and that are filled with lots of resources. Um, of course, like we said, these this event is part of more events, so there's going to be uh, some more, uh, one every week, right? Um, you, you stop me, Sandra, if I say something that doesn't make sense, like it's happening every day live uh, <laughs> from your living room or something. Uh, no, actually, it's uh, once a week where we're going to uh, show you tons of resources. We want to be there for you. We want to be uh, make sure that everyone feels okay uh, in this uh, context. That's our main concern that, uh, you know, alleviate everything that's going on um so yes you can switch to uh, unless you did you want to add something to this uh, slide there sandra i just wanted to say that <clears throat> next monday uh the next one the topic is fun interactive and hybrid teaching okay and who's going to be talking mostly there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I think. laughs> oh so i have to be there um there you go so, and this is our beautiful team. Uh, so for those of you who don't know us yet or who were not there last week, uh, we are part of the RECI, Service National du RECI, Domaine des Langues, English as a Second Language. Uh, Diane, are you still there? I am, I'm still here. There you go. Yeah. So I just wanted to introduce some of the members. So we have uh, Diane with us. I am Martin Tremblay. We have Nadia Larando until 4.30, I hear. Did you want to say hi, Nadia? Hi, oh. hello. Happy to see you. That short talk. And uh, am I forgetting someone? Oh, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> hey. There, there you go. That's, that's the whole uh, A team right there. So, uh, like we said, we are. Uh, <laughs> we're professionals <laughs> yes so we are pedagogical consultants uh for the vc domaine des langues and uh across the province you'll have national vc regional vc and you'll also have local pedagogical consultants uh, that will help you integrate technology into into your classroom but the the protect the, the the thing that's particular with us is that we are there to integrate technology into ESL classrooms. Um, so our mandates, well, I just pretty much said it, uh, but produce and share and promote useful resources, as you're going to see today. Support other consultants and teachers uh, across the board, across the province, and I'll offer various types of training sessions online, face to face, and even in your sleep. Uh, <laughs> it's four o'clock, eh? So. <laughs> so thank you, Martin. So uh, <laughs> that'll do. That'll do. Uh, so I will present our websites. I just wanted to uh, mention that um, if you weren't there last week, uh, there I have a daughter. I have dogs. 
So you might hear sounds, so it's part of life. So <laughs> here we go, I said it. So uh, we're gonna go quickly. So we have two main websites. I don't know if you knew them. <clears throat> Maybe you can tell us uh, on uh, in the chat box. So if you have visited uh, one of these websites, probably you already know our main one. <clears throat> and the second one, the Réseau Pédago Numérique, Maybe it's something that you haven't seen yet. So just a very, very quick overview. The RISI's main websites, uh, you will find a variety of resources on that website. And uh, mainly it's everything that our team uh, does. You know what we develop. So the webinars, the training sessions, the activities. The second website called Réseau Pédago Numérique it's mainly a website where you will find the results of um, development groups that we did with uh, teachers and CPs across the province. So you will find the results of those development groups. So you will have short or long activities and you will see teachers and students in action. So I will present both of the, these websites uh, right at, shortly uh, right away. <laughs> So the main website, I'm going to go quickly. So you have uh, three and I'm going to go directly on the website. So let me tell me if you see it. Martin, do you see the website? Yes. OK, so here yes. when OK, this is the main page. OK, here you have different shortcuts, but the main menu is here. OK, so you have professional development, you have digital environments and resources. OK, so in this section, you will find all the workshops or almost all of them because uh, we have others to add on the, our website. You will find them there. The webinars that we're giving, so we gave and we are giving, uh, we're, we will be giving, will be, can be found here. Uh, eventually, you will have a section about ESL programs. So we're working in collaboration with the, uh, the MEC team uh, the programs. So you will see that section that will uh, eventually uh, be filled with resources. You have a, a section on online training. So we have uh, campus Reci courses, so you can follow uh, online training. And this is the link to our platform that the other platform that we'll talk about. If I click on digital environments, these are uh, microsites that we uh, built for uh, different topics. So you have something on special needs. You have a, a, a platform where students can um, upload their podcast. For now, this platform is not uh, um, is under construction. So we will have a launch of a platform this year. So a new, uh, uh, how could I say? I, I, I only have it in French, a nouvelle mouture. You have coding and, uh, and robotics and you have the again the platform and the section that we are going to talk about today are the uh, learning situations and activities. So this is where you can find uh, the different resources that we will talk about today. So just a point, just a, a point of information. So let's say that you are interested in learning situations and activities and you are working at the elementary level. So here you will have a variety of activities. So let's say that I click on this one. You will have a description of the project. Sometimes there's a video and all the resources that you can download are available on the same page. OK, so sometimes I know that some people said, where can I find this? So this is what I wanted to show you before we present what we want to present today. So this is mainly the, 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 the website. You come back often, often because we have a lot on our plates and we try to update the website as, <laughs> as fast as we can. But, you know, we have um, uh, so meaning that we have a lot of resources that we need to upload uh, on the website. Um, yeah, that's it. So quickly we selected a couple of resources and I, I just wanted to mention also that you saw that we have a lot of mandates and our main mandate is to train teachers train cps and offer on you know support 
So this is mainly what we do. So you're going to find a lot of ideas uh, in our workshops that you can find on, on our website. And so we don't develop, uh, you know, uh, tons of activities. So we do them. And usually it's uh, when we want to um, uh, present different ways to integrate technology. So we create sequences, okay? So you won't find, you know, uh, 50 LESs and so on, but, uh, but you have good ones here. So we selected, a couple of ones and the ones that were select, selected are also some activities that you can also use in hybrid mode, meaning these are digital resources that you can adapt for online teaching, okay, either in class or online. So you have one, uh, Five Little Monkeys, it's a, a template that we did a short sequence of activity on Five Little Monkeys, you know, the song, and you have access to the song, you have access to cutouts with students, and you can use it either in classroom or online. So it was designed specifically for uh, uh, online teaching. We will have others soon, so we're building other short activities for Cycle 1. The second one is three to one action. So it's a, a short sequence of activity where students will create um, a short story. And if they have access to a tablet, they can create a Toontastic, an animated story using Toontastic. This one, I think it's one of our most popular at the elementary level is Wacky News Report. And what I did, I added because uh, it used to be uh, only um, available in PDF. So um, in this LES, so students, they will create, you know, a wacky news report, but I created the uh, digital versions of the uh, booklet for students. So if ever you use it in class and you go online, you can still continue the activities because you have the digital version. And also here, I just wanted to point out, so you see here, example of hybrid planning. So if I click here, you have a direct link at the bottom, a link, we gave you an example of an hybrid planning. So if you teach online, how can, what can you do with students online and what, what can they do alone with that, that LES? So class one and so on. So you have, different examples of activities. And in this LES, you have different links already, digital uh, uh, digital ways to use uh, the, the activities. So you have a, 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 a Padlet with resources that students can access. You have a Kahoot that's already made for you. You have access to a Quizlet. So there's a lot of things that you can already use, to, uh, use uh, with your students. The other one, I'm sure you've seen it. It's um, a collaboration with Emily Racine and Marie-Jacques Villodeau. So it's a Discover Virtual Reality. I think it's a great activity. You know, you don't have to do the entire sequence. You can take parts of this, uh, these activities and they can be easily done online because students, they have access to a link where they explore, uh, you know, virtual environments and they can, they can be partnered with uh, someone online. So if you are familiar with breakout rooms, you can surely use this activity with your students. I don't know if there are some questions, Martin. <clears throat> there are no questions about okay. this, but I have a question <laughs> for our participants because uh, we love to try out uh, new things here. So one of the things I want to try out uh, with you participants is uh, waterfall chat. I don't know if you know about the waterfall chat, but it's one way to keep your students uh, listening and engaged while you want to uh, explain something and you don't want to take too much uh, time out to, for to check this or that. So what what I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you a question and you're going to type the answer in the chat, but you're not going to send it right away. You're not going to send it right away. You're going to just write your answer. And then when I say three, two, one, go, then everybody presses the send button or that little paper plane. And we're going to see everyone's answers coming in. So my question to you is, which one of these would you like to explore first? One, two, three, or four? 
and then I'm going to say go when it's time to submit. So the question was, which one of these resources would you like to explore first? I would like to know your answer in three, two, one, submit your answer. Woohoo, and it's coming in. So this is an easy strategy you can use with your students. Uh, to see what they're thinking and so on. And it's a great way also when you don't want them to uh, simply have one student who answers and everybody copies that answer and you want everyone's individual answer. So the waterfall chat is one way to do it. Thank you so much. I see it's, uh, I don't want to say it's even, but I see three, four, three, two, one. So that's great. Four, one, one, two, three, one, one, three, two. <laughs> So four, it's, three. Yeah, it's quite even, you know, so there's so there's something for I think for everyone here, but I mentioned that we selected four. you can check on the website. There are more. OK, so if we continue. Um, so let's take a look at secondary activities. I don't know. I'm sure you uh, we have. Do we have uh, high school teachers? Yes, we do. We do. Yes. OK. Yes. OK, thank you. <laughs> so um, we have we've selected four uh, activities and or learning situations. So the first one is is called review it. Uh, it's in the same format of the three to one. So uh, it can be done at all levels. So we ask a tea. Mm, my dog's going to bark. <laughs> so we invite students to read. Uh, it could be a short story, could be a graphic novel. Uh, it could be a, a, a bigger, you know, a, a longer book. So it can be if they're at home, they can uh, use, you know, the digital library if they don't have access to English books. And you guide them through uh, creating a book review. So you have the template and you have different prompts. And you have a short sequence, so it's not a long activity. So, and you have the short sequence and all the resources to <clears throat> do this activity with your students. I'm sorry, I have something in my. <coughs> <clears throat> so, while you're coughing, uh, Sandra, I put in the chat there uh, a great site where you can find tons of free stories online. Uh, it's called commonlit.org, so you can go and check it out. You'll thank us later. <clears throat> Thank you. So the second one is the in LES called What Happened to the Drama Teacher. So in uh, so students will they will have to produce a video testimony. So they they act as a, as a um, suspect in an in a crime, and so they need to reinvest information and create a, a narration or a, a police uh, testimony. Uh, at the end of the Decelius. So it's quite a popular one with high school students. Uh, I think it can be adapted. So it's for easel, but you can use it. I, I know it's been used with uh, SEC 4 students or strong students, SEC 2. Uh, the other one is the boy with a pass. Uh, so this uh, LES is uh, created mainly around uh, a podcast. So students. I'm sorry about that. Just a just a second. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> so you can laugh. <laughs> After four o'clock, we yeah. accept kids, animals, birds, everything. <laughs> so it th this LDS is built around, um, like I, I mentioned, a podcast. So of course, the the subject is. Um, um, how do I say? Uh, how could I say it, Martin? Uh, um, uh, sensitive. sensitive. Yeah, I would say sensitive. So if ever you are interested in this LES, you need you need to send me an email, and I will send you the podcast because uh, we have some rights. Uh, I cannot publish the podcast on uh, an open platform. The other one can be uh, creative stations using tablets. So if, if you have access to uh, tablets. And uh, you have a variety of different activities that you can do with the tablet. So being creative. And if you look, take a look at the document, these can also be adapted. You know, uh, the tools can be replaced for online tools. OK, so if you're familiar with online tools, 
um, you can use them. So let's say uh, the activities to create a poster, there are tons of uh, uh, tools to create posters online. So the same sequence can be uh, 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 done, but the tool will be replaced with an online tool. So these are the resources that we uh, selected for high school sec secondary teachers. And I just turned down my microphone, so you know it's time for. Uh, do you have any questions? If anyone has a question about these resources, uh, now is the time. We can take them in the chat, or if you want to turn on your camera and your microphone, or just your microphone, that's also fine. Okay, we'll just wait to see if there are some. In the meantime, I see some people in the chat said they really like the idea of the waterfall chat. So the next thing we're going to try together is another way that you can check on your uh, students so to see if they're listening and getting it. So what we're going, I'm going to try something even uh, riskier, shall we say, than the uh, waterfall chat. It involves turning on your, your cameras and uh, what you're you're going to do is I'm going to ask you the same question again for uh, for the secondary teachers or for the secondary resources that we have there. If you don't want to be seen on the camera, it's really fine. We just need either a piece of paper, but I think it's not going to work because of my background. Oh yes, it works. Okay, so you see there's a number. Okay, so you can either do it with a piece of paper or simply do it with your fingers. So here I'm going to ask you which one of these uh resources would you like to explore first and then you can just when we say go turn on your your camera and just like you can just show us like the number with your fingers or on a piece of paper so which one of these resources would you like to explore first we can just try it out if you want to turn on your cameras it's just like in class all right so i guess most people would go with the waterfall chat okay but I saw very classes where kids, they actually did it, you know, like when everyone has their camera turned on, they actually just go like two or three or they have a sheet of paper. So that's fine. That's fine. OK, so waterfall. I saw a lot of one. I saw a lot of uh, one and four. So but it's interesting. It's another way to engage students. So uh, and you, you make sure, you know, and I think uh, Martin, it's, you, you mentioned you attended uh, a webinar when they say yep. you you often have to verify if students are there, you know, so yep. every 10 minutes. There should be a moment where you say, OK, are you there? Did you understand? Uh, vary the technique so it could be a paper, it could be the waterfall chat, it could be, you know, a, a quick answer or something like that. Doesn't have to be complicated, just need to verify if they are there. Okay, so these are some quick strategies that you can integrate quickly. Yes, uh, good point. So it was on uh, Monday and it was uh, with uh, Professor John Addy and uh, Doug Fisher and Nancy Frey and they said a good rule of thumb was to provide universal response. That's what it's called, universal response opportunity at least every 10 minutes or so when you're doing a synchronous uh, session. And I was talking to another uh, friend of mine who's a math teacher. Uh, and that's it. He was saying, well, we don't know if the kids are still there or if they just pop in at the beginning of, at the beginning of the course and they come back at the end. Well, that's one way to do it. You know, you have these questions prepared in advance where you ask everyone to either like show sign of life uh, or the waterfall chat and you, you have this this vision. One of the things that they were saying is that if all of your students already have like a piece of cardboard with a green red so that's one way that they could do it also if they have a problem so everybody understands instead of saying everybody understands just write if you don't in the chat no everybody turns on their camera and they just show like green or red and i can see ah sandra it's, her screen is red so i know that there's a problem she doesn't need to show her face so uh that's one way to do it thank you so um, so now we've presented the resources, the activities that we've selected from our main website. Now we're going to take a look at the Réseau Pédago Numérique website. So I mentioned that you will find different video clips of teachers and students in action. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to have teachers talk about their uh, learning intention, the type of students that they are uh, working with, the levels, and uh, the idea that they had, why did they choose that tool to integrate 
to, to use with the, some activities. So you will see that on the website. You will see short learning activities, sometimes longer. Uh, there are some teachers that created long LESs um, and different resources to support uh, the use of technology in the classroom. It is also a platform, you know, where uh, we will build resources. So go back often because uh, uh, there, there will be more. OK, so if I click on the Réseau Pédago Numérique, I will explain quickly the structure. So the section, uh, the, the website in three uh, in the three phases of the pedagogical act. So meaning uh, prepare, prepare for learning, carry out a task and the integration phase. OK, so if we look at and also you have keywords. So if you're looking for something specific, elementary, secondary, or with tablets, let's say, you can click on the keyword and it will filter what you need. So in the preparation phase, what we did is that we identified uh, actions that we could, um, that can be, uh, uh, that we could use technology with. So let's say I want to build vocabulary. How can I use technology to do that? Same thing with activating prior knowledge. So mainly, this is not an exhaustive list, but mainly these are the actions that we often do in a learning sequence. So if I take a look at, let's say, uh, activating prior knowledge, well, you will have a variety of activities. So some of them are simple, short, others are longer. So in this case, uh, you see here a teacher that uses a tool called Edpuzzle to activate prior knowledge, and you have the activity sheet and the teacher's guide that she built for this situation. OK, so if I go back in the planning, same thing in the carrying out phase, you have other. Um, so it could be uh, using videos, uh, producing videos because we're in the carrying out phase. So in the carrying out phase, the students will be the user of technology. He will use technology to create something, to write about something. So you have um, some examples of uh, what can be done with technology. And in the integration phase, it's the phase where uh, we reflect, we discuss on possible tr uh, on uh, making links, uh, transfer, uh, present a product, a process, and so on. OK, so mainly the, the site is built around this. And if we go back in the presentation, so I explain the structure, I explain these elements. So I'm going to go fast. So now we've selected three, but you know, on the website, there are more. So we've decided to select those three. It's not because they are better than the others. Uh, it's because uh, you have access to a uh, digital format of these activities, maybe except for the uh, Olympic Winter Games, because we uh, there are some images that cannot be reused. Um, but at least you have some ideas here. So here you have an example of how you can do a book appreciation using video response. The reason why I added that there, it's because you remember, I talked about the review with activity. So they need to produce a book report. So this is a format, you know, the video response is, it's a format that, uh, that can be easily done, used to do a book report or a, a, a review of a book, okay? This one, a very popular one, uh, a guide to being a good ninja. Uh, so it's a complete, uh, LES and uh, on uh, uh, how how to uh, being a good ninja. It's not the ninja meaning uh, the <laughs> you know the um, martial the assassin. Uh, yes, <laughs> the secret <laughs> assassin. Yeah, that's it. But the the qualities uh, of being a good ninja oh. and those qualities that can be used. Uh, uh, in a classroom or in uh, their everyday lives, and the students they have to produce an interactive guide um, about this project. And the other one is create uh, a presentation that they will narrate, they will talk 
over the presentation about Olympic Winter Games. Of course, it was in 2018, but still, the athletes are still athletes, athletes, and we can we have a lot of information about uh, those uh, short texts that are very uh, accessible for uh, um, primary students, elementary students. If I uh, and I just wanted to mention, maybe I didn't do it here. You see. Um, like a sheet. If I go back on our website, if let me just give you an example. Let's go in carrying out in a section. So let's say I take a look at one activity. I will present that one for uh, for secondary teachers. So it's a survivor's journal. So you always have, you know, um, you know the 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 project overview. So if I click here. You have an overview of the project, uh, the teacher uh, who uh, wrote or who did that DLES, the consultant uh, that collaborated and helped out uh, throughout the project. You have the uh, targeted competency, the tool that was used and the technology that was used and a short sequence, an explanation uh, of the activity, but very, very uh, uh, quick overview. So it, it gives you an idea of if you are interested in using the resource. So I would suggest that you go first and read uh, the activity uh, overview. Then you will see if you are interested in using those resources. OK. You also have some example of students. Sometimes you have the rubrics and you have uh, Let's say here it's a journal, it's a digital format, and you can use it online with your students. And all the activities, I, 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 don't, I think I didn't mention it before, but everything on our websites are under Creative Commons license. Uh, so it means that everything can be, uh, uh, you can make a copy and you can adapt, you can change things, if you, you you know you can remove things, but you always keep you know the 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 uh, authors. But you can you just need to write back. You said it's the same license, so you write back uh, uh, adapted from with the same Creative Commons license. Okay, I I'm, may want to make sure that I'm being clear with that uh, that part. I don't know if there are some questions about the the license. Is that okay? Okay, should be. <laughs> so now uh, for high school secondary, I already presented the survivor's journal. So uh, the students, what they will need to do in that uh, situation is that they will read different uh, text about uh, real people that had uh, uh, that survived a uh, different situation and they will need to um, uh, enact uh, a situation. So they're trapped, I think, uh, uh, at the basement of the school and the, no one knows that they are there. So they, they, they will do a kind of a, a video, a, a video journal of their different days uh, kept in the break, the base room, uh, the, the, sorry, <laughs> the base base room, the basement of the school. The second one is create a clip of a sport, of a promotional clip of a sports resort. It's kind of a, a flyer, but in a video format. And the other one, just in time for Christmas, you have here an activity, create a book about Christmas. And what I like, so I'm going to just click on it because we're really in, in the, the right moment to talk about this activity. And what I like about uh, this activity is that I'm going to click on it, is that you can select, you don't have to do the entire sequence. OK, so you have different questions that you can address to your students and you don't have, like I mentioned, you don't have to do the entire activity and you don't even have to create a book because you have a digital format of this booklet. So the students, they could write their answers directly here okay the idea of creating a book is, is that students could enhance their product their, their project with uh, different pictures 
uh, with the narration, with videos. But uh, if you don't have time for that, this can be used uh, uh, directly in a classroom. And you have very interesting, it's another way of uh, talking about Christmas. So we're ta you can talk about needs and wants, uh, the Maslow Pyramid. Uh, we can talk about, there's a video that you can use that has been edited in a puzzle. So you have a variety of activities there that might be interesting for the, uh, the upcoming weeks. Good. So that does it for our um, presentation <laughs> of the, the different resources. But like I mentioned, it's, it's really a quick overview. We've selected a few things that could be interesting for you. And we want, maybe we could ask them, uh, Martin, do you have something prepared? For? For, you know, for that section? Uh, no, for what, wh which section, I'm sorry? I, I, I was just bouncing. Uh, <laughs> I, I missed it. I'm sorry. I was uh, looking at the chat there for a second to see if there were no questions and I missed yours. So. No, no, that's okay. So just I wanted to say uh, verify with you. So do you have something you say, oh, this one, I, I think it's interesting. I would use it. Which one of them would you uh, maybe try out? Oh, for the uh, yes, for LESs, the uh, and yeah, activities, yeah. which ones sparked your curiosity? I think we have Diane on the line. Yeah, well, I think uh, I think if I were going to pick one, I would pick the one that I didn't work on <laughs> because two of them I worked on, so I know what they are, and they were so. I, if I were going to do one as a teacher, I would do. Um, the create a promotional clip of a sports resort, obviously, but the uh, the survivors journal was a really big hit at uh, at our service center. Um, the, there were two teachers initially that started working on it together, and they did their own sort of Blair Witch type video um, when they were trapped in the basement. And the students like they loved it. It was so much fun seeing you know the iPad and the teachers like, oh my god. She's driving me nuts. I mean, it, it was it was hilarious. So um, the kids really really liked it, and it was very um, um, like oh good Joel, you know. Uh, um, so they liked it a lot. Uh, the Christmas the Christmas book. There were some um, some of the classes. I think the enriched class that it was done with. The, the the teacher had it read they had the students read their books to other kids so that was a, a fun follow-up so but i i haven't even looked at the the sports resort so i'd probably do them all actually thank you uh, diane i I'm, I'm sure it's it's hard to answer because you haven't seen you know the different activities but i was just curious so thank you diane for your uh, your uh, input um so i don't know if you have any questions on this section uh something you're looking for or i'm gonna wait maybe uh, we, we yeah need i think to we have some people typing silence huh <laughs> or we can I, I can still keep an eye on the the chat because i see okay. margaret is typing so you can just continue and uh, when i see uh, if i see a question popping up uh, i'll share it we're gonna we're gonna wrap up so we have next events we mentioned that next week next monday we're gonna talk about different ways you can uh, um, <clears throat> do fun interactive and hybrid teaching Bing. and and do you know that you can have a badge for this event. So you just need to uh, go on Campus Rissi and follow the instructions that are um, presented here in the presentation. And once you complete it, it, it's not complicated. It seems a lot, but it's really a couple of clicks. So you just need to have an account on Campus Rissi and follow the steps and that's it. We will, you will receive a badge for your participation. And and uh, Sandra, yes. Uh, so we had a question. Well, not a question, but a comment from Margaret that she was so glad that she came here uh, this evening because uh, the create the Christmas book is exactly uh, what she was planning to do. But I, I told her I said, wait, there's more. And so I'll let you uh, 
I'll let okay. you talk about it. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about, so we've decided to prepare special activities for Christmas, okay? So we've been working very hard on creating something fun for all cycles, so from elementary through secondary. So maybe I can talk about, I, I won't reveal everything, but maybe a, a, a small part because you're here. So elementary level, we're gonna focus on the short story and games that we created to go with that. Maybe I could say that. In high school, that, we're gonna- That can be played online, right? Because yeah, we know yeah. that uh, there are some days uh, that the government said, okay, everybody's at home. So we said, mm -hmm. okay, if everybody's at home, we can prepare stuff that's interactive and online. That's it, and for high school? For high school? Um, do you want me to reveal the theme? Yes, the theme could be the theme. So, yeah. or, or Diane, you want to reveal it? You mean the Easter theme? That's right. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, there so, is an Easter egg in there, but um, so true, are, are so we true. really revealing the theme? Sure, because it's so broad that uh, yeah. I guess uh, we're not revealing that we're much. So the details, just the theme. Okay, so for high school, the theme is going to be holiday traditions. Around the world. Yeah. Now I've got the song in my head again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought around the world. No, no that it's been recorded, huh? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I'm fine. I've uh... <laughs> so. That's it. And we we are trying very hard. Whoops. We are trying very hard to have them ready before we said that it will be ready on December 14th. We're trying hard to reveal, you know, to publish them before December 14th. But uh, we will have a special uh, presentation to show you what are these activities and how you can use them online with your students on December 14th. So uh, we added an extra uh, presentation. So you can follow us. You have our uh, contact information. So if ever you have anything, you want to send us an email, you have a question, you can contact us. Follow us on Twitter. That's super yeah. pedagogical on my, on my end, at least. I use it 200% for pedagogical stuff lots of things happening so <laughs> margaret is telling us now i'm trying to figure out how the easter egg fits into <laughs> your theme you guys are awesome and i'm so thankful for everything you do thank you so much the thank easter you. egg uh, if you're not familiar with it it's uh it's when you hide things in movies or uh so in in this case we're going to hide some some fun stuff in in our games uh the games are fun the texts are even more fun, and then we add even more fun stuff hidden around the place. So that's the idea. So um, <clears throat> thank you. So uh, like I mentioned, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe you can say the bye-byes. <laughs> sure. So it uh, looks like the dogs are telling us to wrap it up. <laughs> so uh, we, we want to thank everyone that joined us today. We're going to be there again uh, next week. Uh, so again, follow us. So we got tons of things for you. Uh, unless, uh, Margaret, we we're seeing you. So did you have a question to ask us? Or oh, you just wanted to say bye. So thank you so much. Thanks for your questions, comments, and so on. Uh, stay safe. Take care of yourselves. We're there for you. We're all in this together. <laughs>